Graph Grooms is a powerful new feature in Ornatrix version 4 for Maya that allows you to create hairs very quickly using a pre-designed set of presets. We have covered the concept and the usage of Graph Grooms in a previous video tutorial, so check that one out if you need a refresher. In this tutorial, we're going to see how to create a brand new Graph Groom that you can make yourself, distribute to other people and use on your own assets. So the first thing I need for my Graph Groom is to find a model that has good topology on the surface. So it needs to be clean and have a well-defined edge loops. And then I need to know what is the purpose of my graft groom going to be. For example, in this case, I want to create an eyebrow graft groom that will generate just the eyebrow area for the user. But you may also want to create a mustache or a beard or maybe even a full face graft groom or maybe even the scalp. And the concept and the steps for all of these different graft grooms would be the same. You just need to localize different parts of the mesh for each one. So in this case for the eyebrow, what I want to do first is I want to go into my model and I'll enter the face component mode and select just the faces of the mesh that will contain my eyebrow. When you're thinking about making a graft groom, you need to think that you can have potentially many grooms for the same graft surface. So what we're creating now is a graft surface. And this means that you need to have a graft surface that's sufficiently big and all encompassing such that all the potential grooms that you create on it will be residing on top of it. So I think that this general area will cover many different shapes and forms of different types of eyebrows and I'm happy with it. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to invert my selection and delete all of the other faces on the mesh. So here we have just the shape of an eyebrow and this is the graft surface that can be potentially placed on many different target meshes. As long as they uh, resemble a face, a user should be able to wrap this onto another face. So I'm just going to save this scene right now and I'll just call it my graft surface. Once I have created my graft surface, it's also good to create a thumbnail image that we will be able to use when selecting this graft surface in production. To do this, I will just print screen by using Alt print screen or just print screen. I will open the paint application in Windows. Of course, you can use any other image editor. Then escape and I will just crop the area that contains this eyebrow over here. It doesn't need to be perfectly square, just as long as it contains my eyebrow, it should be fine. And also I'm going to resize it to be a bit smaller just so that the resulting file is not too big. I will set the width to 150 pixels, which should be enough. And I will go back to Maya and uh, use the create grooms dialog to find out where my grooms folder is. I'm going to copy this directory and then in the paint application, I will save my file into this directory and I will name it eyebrow because this is the name that we will choose for our graft surface. It needs to be a PNG file. So once I name it, it should be okay. I'll just cancel out of this. The next step is to create our first graft groom on top of the surface. The way that you choose to pursue this is entirely up to you because here we can create any kind of Ornatrix groom and use it as a preset for this graft surface. But the way I like to do eyebrows in this case is to just create a fur ball on top of the surface. And uh, then I'm going to shape it a little bit, decrease its width and control its length a little bit. I'm going to move the edit guides operator on top of my hair from guides. And then I will use the delete brush to delete any of the hairs that I don't really want. So I'll just leave the hairs where I think the eyebrow should be. And then I will also use the surface comb operator to define the direction and the length of my eyebrow. So I will just add some things here. I will turn on the effect whole strand parameter so that the sinks not only control the direction, but they also control the length of the strands. And I'll just roughly define the eyebrow shape. Of course, the best way is to use a reference image, maybe from Google or uh, from somewhere else to create a realistic looking eyebrow. Now that I have the basic shape groom here, I need to think about how I can make it more parametric and how I can allow users to customize it if they don't like the shapes that I have created here.
For example, it is easy to control the width of the hairs by using this width parameter, and this is great. But what if the, we also wanted to let the user to control the length of the strands? For this, I will add the length operator on top. I will just leave the default value of 1 so it will not do anything, but we will allow user to make this eyebrow shorter or longer. I will also add a uh, freeze operator and reduce its value way down, maybe remove all the outliers, so that we also allow users to uh, add a little bit of randomness to this eyebrows shape. I can also add other operators like detail or something else to further allow customization of my groom, but for the sake of this tutorial, let's just leave these two. Once I'm done setting up my procedural hair stock, all I need to do is select all of the operators that are involved, right click and use this box option over here. All of these operators will be collapsed into the single groom node. And by default, this is already enough to export a graft groom. But remember that we want to allow the user to customize our graft groom in uh, different ways. And to do that, let's expose some parameters. We already covered the Python parameters in, in a separate tutorial, but let's just quickly go over them again to understand how they can be used in this scenario. So first thing is I need to expand this groom parameter script roll down over here and click the edit parameter script button. This will open your current Windows text editor and it will have the default parameter script, which is all commented out. Here I need to decide what parameters I want to expose to the users and how I want to expose them. So first thing that's good to expose is probably the point count, which is the number of points that we will have per strand. And let's set the minimum value here to two and maybe maximum value to 20. And by default, we will have 10 points. So next thing that we will expose is the change width parameter. So I will uncomment this value parameter here and rename it to width. And we will set the minimum width to be zero, maximum to be one. And the default value will be 0 0.01. Actually, let's make the maximum value smaller so that we get a nice slider. Next thing we will expose is the length. Uncomment this value parameter here, rename to length. Minimum length will be zero, maximum will be two. And this is not the absolute length, but this is a multiplier. So we can just set the default value to one. And finally, we will allow the user to freeze the hair. Again, expose the value parameter, rename it to freeze. The minimum will be zero, the maximum will be maybe 10, and the default will be 0 0.01. Once I'm done, I just save inside my text editor and click the update button inside Maya's attribute editor. So now we have these parameters that are exposed to the user and they can, they can change the internal operators inside of our groom operator here by using these parameters. At this point, it's good to save your scene again. And I'm going to save this as graph surface groom one boxed. It was actually a good idea to also save this before we boxed the groom. I forgot to do this just in case that you wanted to later on experiment and add or remove other operators from our groom. So I will just save as. And now I will select the shape of my groom and then use this generate groom from selection button in Ornatrix to open the generate groom dialog. Here I will name my groom, so I will just call this eyebrow1. I will save this into the default grooms directory and I will also need a thumbnail file. So let's just cancel out and create this thumbnail first. Just as before, I will use the alt and print screen. Open, open my paint editor, paste my groom here. I will crop it and I will resize it to be maybe about 150 pixels in width. And I will just save it as a file so that we can select it. I will save this file inside this thumbs folder and I will call it the same name as my groom, which is eyebrow one. And then when generating this groom, if I go back to the generate groom dialog, I will type in eyebrow one again. And now inside this thumbnail, I will select the image that we have just captured. Notice that now we also have this create as graft surface option checked here. So besides creating this eyebrow groom, we also want to define a graft surface file for it. 
I will just call this graft surface eyebrow and I will leave this fit handles option empty for now. So all we need to do is, is press generate and now our groom is generated. So let's just create a new scene to check that our groom was generated correctly. I will just create a basic sphere and resize it. And then I will use the graft grooms tool window in Maya to find the new eyebrow graft surface that we created previously. If I click on this, we see that we have our eyebrow graft groom in it available. And if I click and drag inside the viewport, we can now uh, click and fit our graft groom on top of our sphere. When the fitting operation is complete, we get our eyebrow here. And as expected, all the parameters that we have defined before, we can now use to alter the appearance of our eyebrow. However, one thing right now is not very good. And that's the fact that when I click and drag, it is arbitrarily choosing which parts of the surface mesh are being used to fit the surface. So you see when I click and I drag, it's not using the, uh, the beginning and the end of my groom, but rather it's doing it somewhere in the middle. Also, it's creating the eyebrow, not horizontal, but it's almost vertical. And this is something that we can address next. So let's go back to the previous scene that we ha have created, which is the graft surface before we created the new groom. And let's just uh, pretend that we want to create a second groom. So I will just go through the same process again. I will create a basic fur ball. I will change its parameters. I will de delete the parts that I don't need and I will not do anything else uh, for now. Let's just pretend that I have created a second graft groom that I want to be selectable. So as before, I'll just uh, capture an image for this. I'll save this as eyebrow two and I will box my operator stack as before to create just the single groom node. I will select uh, the shape of my groom and use the generate groom dialog to create the second groom. I will call this eyebrow two and uh, for thumbnail, I will select the second image that we created. And notice that now, instead of saying create a new graft surface, it says update graft surface. And it shows us that we already have one groom, which is the previous eyebrow groom that we have created. And now we need to pay attention to this fit handles option here. So fit handles with graft grooms are the two points that are the starting and the ending coordinates of the graft surface when you are dragging this graft surface on top of a target surface. And by default, Ornatrix will try to pick its own. But what we want to do in this case is to tell it that we want the first point to be dragged is uh, this point over here. And the last point to be dragged is the, this point over here. So we want to fit this groom from here to here. To do this, I will select my original graft surface, right click on it and go into the face component mode. I will select the first face here and I will note inside Maya the index of this face. In this case, it is index 20. And then I will click the second face over here and I will note that the index of this face is six. This is important. So I will go back into the object mode, select my second groom. I will go back into the generate groom dialog and uh, reselect all the options. And now inside this fit handles control over here, I need to specify the index of the first phase that we noted, which is 20. Then I will enter 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. These two coordinates just mean the center of the phase. So uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Then I will enter six, which is the index of the second phase that we have selected. And again, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 to denote the center of that phase. Notice that all of these values are separated by comma. In total, there should be six of them. So 20, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 6, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. I'll just press generate again. And now I will create a new scene. I'll create a sphere. And then inside the Ornatrix Graft Grooms tool window, we see that we have two grooms available now. I'll just click and drag on the surface. And now you see that it's using the faces that we have selected to start and end the dragging operation. So it's actually allowing us to create the eyebrow surface from the left side to the right side instead of doing it weirdly vertically like I did before. Now, when I have created my groom, I can go into the graft grooms section of my groom operator and I can switch between the two grooms that we have created on the fly. So the idea is to be able to define many, many different types and shapes of eyebrows and to allow you to quickly pick between them 
until you see the one that you like and uh, once you have selected it to further refine these parameters until you get exactly the result that you that you want finally let's go back to the grooms directory and take a look at the file that was generated to define the graft groom surface and the surface was created inside this oxgs file and if I open uh, this file in my text editor, you can just see that it has three entries. It has the eyebrow, which is the name of our groom. It has a hash value here, which is a unique hashing value defining the surface. And then finally, we have the groom handles over here that we have specified. The grooms themselves were saved into the USD zipped archives. So we have eyebrow one here and eyebrow two archive here. And the thumbnails for them were saved into this thumbs directory. Even if I don't have the thumbs, for example, if I delete them, the thumbnails for these images are still present inside this USD zipped archive and will be automatically extracted by Ornatrix the next time that uh, you open up the Graft Grooms tool settings window. So I hope that this description of creating the Graft Grooms inside Ornatrix was clear enough and will enable you to create quick and robust grooms using Ornatrix.